Nicole Knight and I'm Emma Baker. In today's stories, a new crime wave is sweeping the country from will and graffiti. Scientists have invented an invisibility cloak. We help them find it. And the latest in the weather around the country. But first, a story that will turn your world upside down. If you think the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, it turns out you're right. Builders in Germany have built an upside-down house, and before you think they may have read the plans upside down, they did it on purpose. The wacky abode was built as a tourist attraction, as well as being a comment of the state of the world. The house is 23 feet tall and rests on its roof, and has steel beams in the attic. Inside the house are beds screwed up the ceiling, upside-down wardrobes, an upside-down kitchen, and even an upturned bathroom though it's not known if anyone has tried to have a bath in it or go to the toilet. <coughs> Normally a house like this would take three weeks to build. This one took over four months because workers kept getting confused by the strange angles of the walls. Many tourists visiting the house complain of feeling sick and dizzy after just a few minutes inside. We now cross over to our reporter Joshua Jossip, Jessup who is inside the house. How are you feeling Joshua Jessup? Thanks, Nicole. I'm here with the owner of the house, Tilly Topsy, and I'm feeling slightly dizzy from all this upside downness. <coughs> so, what made you decide to build the upside down house? Well, I was watching my TV one day and they were showing Grand Design's most odd looking houses when the single cu signal cut off and went all fuzzy. The next thing I knew, I was watching an upside down television. That's when I had my brainwave. A few days later, I drew up the plans for my upside down house. What comment do you feel the house makes of the, s the state of the world? I think this house shows that everything in the world is changing and we need to adapt to it. Though some people may disagree with change, I think that now this house is built, it could be a new way of living. What are some of the challenges of living in an upside down house? Gravity. I have had a few difficulties with my house. To make walking about easier, I decided decided to invent wall walking shoes. In the toilet there is a water transferring pump and in the shower there is a plug on the ceiling. With all these neat inventions it has made my life a lot easier. Thanks Tilly. Well that's all for me. Back to you Nicole. Thanks Josh. Even watching that makes me feel a bit funky or crazy inside. You weird, weird child. Okay, moving on. And now for a story that is truly out of sight. Harry, look out, Harry Potter. The world, of ah, the world of science is catching up to the world of magic. Scientists in Europe have created a 3D invisibility cloak which can hide objects by bending light waves. It has been found that light waves can be controlled by special tiny crystals that make objects disappear. So far, scientists have made small objects such as coins disappear but I hope it won't be long before they start hiding cars, planes, and even people. People have always dreamed of making themselves invisible. One top scientist says the possibilities are endless and we are all ex very excited. However, since inventing the invisibility cloak, the scientists have had trouble finding it. As soon as we put it down somewhere, it just disappears, the inventor of the cloak said. It appears that they are having trouble finding other things too, like their lunch, which they think might be underneath the cloak. What will this invention actually be used for? Hoping to see through the reasons behind the invisibility cloak is our here on the spot reporter Sam with more on the story. Hello, I'm Joshua Jessick and with me is Dr. Nuts, one of the scientists behind the invisibility cloak. Hi Dr. Nuts. And thanks for joining us today. Oh, right. What made you want to invent the invisibility cloak? Well, as a child, I, I was really bad at hide and go seek. And one day when I was hiding, my mind suddenly clicked. Oh yes, a way to get better hide and go seek was to invent an invisibility cloak. So 15 years of long and hard and non-stop work, I finally finished my final product of my invisibility cloak. Could you be so kind to show me how it works? Do 
you like my little booty clip? Okay. It, to, to act, oh. All you have to do is, to activate invisibility cloak, you need to get two milliliters of invisibility ink and put it on. It activates the cloak, so all you have to do is shine a light at it, and you'll see it slowly materializing. What do you hope the cloak will be used for? I'm hoping the police will be able to play hide and go seek with the boy racers and the school bullies. Coming, ready or not. Uh, <coughs> what, what would happen if the cloak got into the wrong hands? Bad, bad things would happen. Well, that makes things clear. Thanks for joining us, and we're out. And we're out of time. Over to you, Nicole. <coughs> Thanks, Sam. And now, how's this for interesting yarn? A new wave of graffiti crime is covering the country thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters. These wool-waving criminals are covering tree branches and lampposts with small jerseys and scarves underneath the cover of darkness. Police say the knitted activities of the gang are illegal because their woolly crimes have been done on public property without permission. The popularity of the woolen graffiti is growing and more and more public objects are being wrapped up every night. But the problem is growing, <clears throat> police say and warn that if the midnight knitters aren't caught very soon, every tree, lamppost and traffic light in the country will be warmly dressed against the cold. Problem is spinning out of control, there are close knitted groups of dye in the wool criminals. We are stitching together a case, but it's not seamless. There are no real patterns to the crimes, a police spokesman said today. So far the criminal, kn criminal knitters have arrested escape arrest um, but continue to pull the woolen wool over the eyes of both the public and the police. We go now to our secret location with our investigator a report Scarlet Rose who has an exclusive interview with one of the Midnight Ninja Gangs. Thanks, thanks Nicole, I'm Scarlet Rose and joining me in this top secret location is a member of the Midnight Knitters gang. Hello Tyrone Neal and thanks for joining us. So what led you into the dark underworld of graffiti knitting? Well I wanted to change the way I graffitied because I kept on getting caught with a spray can so I decided to go into knitted graffiti. But one day I saw the scarf blown up in a tree and that's when I got my idea. So, do you see yourself as a criminal? Why? Why not? No, 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 no. Wait, man. No. Well, I see myself as helping elderly women and people like that, because I employ them, and I give them jobs. And even if you go into the knitting homes in the middle of the night, you'll hear the clitter clatter of the knitting needles. Hmm. So, apart from trees, lampposts, and traffic lights, what else would you like to graffiti with your willens? Well, if I could get the town's permission, I would love to graffiti all the houses so they could be warm and snug, and then we could save power, which would save money, which would give more money to all elderly women so we could hire them and buy more wool, and then everything would be green. Well, that's just great. Thanks for your time, Tyrone, of the Midnight Nurses Gang. We now go over to Nicole. Thank you, Scarlett. <clears throat> and now for our weather forecast with Tommy Tornado. Thank you, Nicole. Lovely. S uh. Thank you, Nicole. Night. Lovely story. Good evening, New Zealand. Let's have a look at tomorrow's weather. Study at the far north in Kaitaia. Look out for some pretty flash flooding and raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, please wear a hat. Moving down to Auckland, there will be a mix of fair conditions and unfair conditions. But those are conditions and you'll just have to accept them. There will be no weather at all for the Bay of Plenty. It's taking a short holiday, but it's expected to be back for the weekend. In the Napier and the Hastings, the weather will be sometimes changeable and sometimes not. We have really no idea what will happen there. In Taranaki, a mild depression brings with a very dull day, with no highlights at all. It will be overcast and gloomy all morning, but things should cheer up 
by the evening, so don't worry, everything will be fine. Wellington, have another capital day. There'll be no wind, all, and the day conditions will be so pleasant they'll actually be extreme. At the top of the South Island, Kaikoura can accept to have a good day, meeting friends for lunch, going for a swim, and even reading the newspaper. But try to stay indoors, as the weather will be just terrible. A real mix for Christchurch will we'll have some unreasonable rainfall, some sensible wind, moderate thunderstorms, and some very angry snow. And in the lower south, Dunedin will be frosty, cold, unfriendly until late morning when the sun will pop over for a visit. Everybody likes the sun. That's all for me. Remember, if it's raining outside, that's the weather for you. Good night, New Zealand. Now it's back to the news desk with Nicole Knight and Emma Baker. Thank, thank you, Tommy Tornado. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you enjoyed this evening's broadcast. Thank you for all for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Until then, I'm Nicole Knight. And I'm Emma Baker from GBS News. Goodbye. In your mama. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Roll the camera. Okay. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we are featuring an interview with a very peculiar looking gentleman. Scene one. Take one.